Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I have two free plugs for you today. These are Audio Unit and Mac and PC VST, and as you can see, they are more of the controlless ones, meaning that um, there's literally nothing to go wrong with them. So these are good to go. Now I've been asked for these plugins specifically. Here's what they do. What you do is you put on some kind of metering or just listen and these radically change the tonality of the sound going through them as follows. This is the regular sound. If I put on slew only, hang on a second. I set that so you can see what's happening. What slew only does is this. You're getting only high frequencies. And by uh, the same token, what subs does only is this. Now that's very much subs only right there. Here's why you might want this. And as always, um, these plugins are free Air Windows, AU, and VST. So if you're wondering about them and you're bored of listening to me talk, go ahead and download them and fool around with them. There's nothing really that can go wrong as far as if you like what they're doing and using it for some other purpose, that's awesome. I'm, I'm fine with that. If you'd like to know what I meant by it or how they are intended to be used, Stay tuned. I've got span open. This is one of the reasons why I won't even bother making a metering plugin. Why should I make a metering plugin when we've got this? It's so good. It's Fox Angle, Fox Angle Span, it's wonderful stuff. And I like the density mode in this amplitude meter. We can turn it on and you can see that the um, loudness is around nine or so it's peaking out at about zero hanging around in that sort of or yellow to uh, red zone the idea is when you're mixing something sometimes it's useful to change your listening environment for instance i've done things like mixing and then go into another room and like lie down on the floor or something so you can hear nothing but a lot of bass and the the sort of room tone stacking up or you can go to the back of the room and sit on a couch sit where the the low end builds up by the same token there are speakers such as the ns10s that i like to use that can be very bright so they're whacking you with a lot of high frequencies that way you can hear what you're doing what slew only and subs only do is they allow you to hear the mix that you're doing in some radically different contexts. And I'll first show you what the amplitude does, and then I'll show you how you might work around that using some of other things that are to be coming out pretty soon. So you're getting a little preview here once I get certain controls, like this is one that is to be coming out. I have to get these controls working properly. Anyways, slew only and subs only. Watch what happens with the amplitudes. The idea is to get it, getting a proper balance, you should be peaking out at around the same places with each of these. If, you're, if your peaks are much less loud on slew only, that means you're probably darker than you need to be. By the same token, if you're blowing things up with the peaks in slew only, maybe you're brighter than you need to be. And subs only, if the low end is completely overwhelming everything, that's not a good sign and it might need to be tailored. And more relevantly, you'll be able to hear the balance between the lows of things like bass guitar and kick drum and work out whether they're fighting each other or working with each other. I'll demonstrate that. It's my little rock and roll song. Now, instead of watching the graphic part, watch what happens with this amplitude part. 
we see that our highs are hovering maybe a little less hot than that, but they're still in roughly the same area. And the peaks are also going right up to where they were. So it's fairly well balanced. Now one thing to notice is that once you've actually turned it back off, it's probably going to sound kind of strange. Throw loads of highs on things and then shut it off and it's going to seem as if the highs are all gone. So sometimes it's useful to bounce over to the opposite one just to listen to it briefly. Again, near subs only. And with this we can hear that I definitely have a fondness for throwing a lot of low frequency thumps in there. It might not be super duper obvious, but the subs are hitting about as hard as I can make them hit while remaining reasonably balanced. And we turn it back on again. And you can hear that they more or less work with each other. And again, the amplitudes were around the same amount. You'll notice that if you turn on subs only, if you're listening on, say, a laptop, for instance, perhaps you're listening to me doing this video on a laptop, check this out. I'm willing to bet that most of you on laptops can't hear a thing going on. It's not letting anything out below around maybe 100 hertz or so. And it's definitely wiping everything over 200 or so. It's like 300 hertz is more than 72 dB down. Certain speakers are just not going to reproduce what subs only gives you. And this is why it's there, so that if you're stuck working on something like that for some reason, don't be stuck working on that for some reason. At least you can look at the levels. And in fact, I can take span away. And you'll see that the output level on Logic itself will show you some of the same things. Not as nicely. I really like the density mode, but... We've got this. It's good and loud. And you can see it's going to around the same places. And slew only. you'll be able to see if things are really wildly out of whack. Now, in order to show you what I'm doing with this as far as adjusting things, there's also a place for slew only and subs only. And those are included as plugins on my, they're, they're included as features on my plugin Ditherbox, which will eventually also be free. That one has these various dithers that I use, including normal ones and simple truncation but it's also got the slew only, subs only, and a silhouette mode, just so that you can switch into that and kind of monitor what it is. But we're, what we're going to do right now is look at ways in which we can adjust particular instruments based on what we're hearing through these unusual modes. And we'll try slew only first. Like this makes us Maybe a little better than the last one that I did, but it's my little power trio kind of thingy. It's a power trio with a sequenced Zox box into an amplifier on the right channel. But you'll notice I've got these going on, and I've got a control, a plugin called Purest Air on both of these guys. Now, you might not get a huge difference off of these. But here's what you might do monitoring it through slew only. Now with this, if we turn off this purest air, you can hear that the guitar and the synthesizer are dropping right back. They're getting, I'm gonna shut off the room for a second so it's easier to hear. That's a little trick that I used. Um, it's nothing but a compressed room mic, and it's got a single sample delay, so it's doing an echo, but it's just a sample delay on the thing. But here's the thing. If you're listening to the guitar and the synthesizer with just slew only, you might want to put some kind of high frequency boost in here. And then they stand up a little bit more. In fact, we can even crank them.
And that way, they stick out really clearly. Then if we shut off Slew Only again, and again, remember to stop it and readjust your ear if you're doing this kind of thing, because it's very disorienting having such an extremely radical EQ to monitor through just suddenly go away again. When we get back and hear that some of our um, sounds like the guitar are balancing with the highs a little better. And of course, we can also do silly things like we'll drag over slew only onto just the right overheads so that we can see what would it sound like if we had the hi-hats goosed way, way up. And it'd be kind of like this. So you can certainly use this on individual tracks. The interesting thing about slew only is it's a very basic mathematical procedure. So this is a zero latency plugin. It also has no pre-ring. It's a pretty sharp EQ curve, but the way that it's done, it's like an FIR filter of um, one sample. So what it's doing is very sharply defined in time. And this has its uses. You can use it to do things like, here, I'll put this room back. We'll hear what that sounds like. And then if we were going to drag this over here, it would sound kind of like that. And it's always possible to throw this on something just to brighten it the hell up, but it really lacks the tone colorations that you get from, say, linear phase, um, digital EQ. There's a, there's a cleanness and a dryness to it from just the very simplicity of the algorithm. It's a thing where that is the only EQ curve you get out of this algorithm. And that's why people don't routinely go and use this. It's because like, oh, well, who wants just a treble boost that's nothing but a treble boost? Well, sometimes I want just a treble boost that's nothing but a treble boost. You can throw it on this guitar, for instance, and... And it's such a treble boost that it's wiping out the guitar completely. Now, another thing that you can do is fool around with subs only. And subs only, like you see, very, very huge here. In fact, I can, oh, that's right. I was just talking about slew only. Here's what you might do with subs only. Now I gotta take a moment to explain what Fathom 5 is. That's gonna be coming out soon. It's gonna be coming out when I can figure out how to make VST work well with these controls. That's something that me and my brother are working on. I'm very new to VST, I'm very new to PC, so I'm running into some of the, the issues that people run into coding this stuff. But what it is, is essentially a little bit like subs only, but um, there's a lot more going on with it. It's more of a tone shaper, and subs only is more of a literally letting through only subsonic frequencies. It's designed, calibrated to be exactly what it is. But what we're doing with Fathom 5 here is using it as a bus. And this stuff is feeding the bus. Now, I don't have to have it on. If I take it off of this mix, what you're going to get is this. Now, that might sound kind of similar, but if we turn on subs only and listen to only the extreme lows, what we get, you notice this is reinforcing it a lot if you can monitor that stuff. Like, I'll mute it, and then there's much less of that going on. And I'll turn on Fathom 5 again. And we got a lot more of that really heavy room shaking kind of stuff. 
and I got it set it up in a way where it can be boosted and turned around and changed. I can also do this with it of um, we can fool with it and make it go like this so that it's a little midier or we can bring it down to where it's doing a subs only kind of thing. Mind you, it's not going to get exactly the same tonality because it's a very different algorithm and it's, it's very much its own thing. But part of what's going on with Fathom 5 that you can monitor and dial in with subs only is that I'm feeding it these buses in order to drive it and then I'm mixing it back in. It's running inside console. Console is also another free Air Windows plugin. I need to explain a little bit as to how this works because people ask me about how to use console a lot. So the thing is running on console and that's what we're monitoring through the slew only and subs only. And after going through all of this stuff, it's being fed into the bus and the bus is just this low frequency thing. As you can see, it also does a sub and it's adjustable in various ways. It could be used for various things. But what you do with how you drive it has a great deal of effect on how the super lows behave. And as such, if you're monitoring through subs only, and again, this is going to be pretty boring for you if you're just monitoring through a laptop, that that's not, this is not going to be your friend if you're just listening through a laptop. Listen to something with real bass. But you can turn on subs only. Notice that we've got this going on. And then if we start changing around the feeds, you can hear that there is that bass. Well, what if it was a lot louder? We can drive it so hard that it's eating up all of the sub frequencies and we're not getting much of the kick anymore. And that sounds kind of like this. See, if I if I turn the solo off, it doesn't really do anything because subs is only listening to that super low stuff and that's kind of what this channel is feeding into the mix. And we have all the super lows. This is what that sounds like as part of the regular mix. So now, our kick drum is a lot less beefy. Let's see what happens when we kill the bass right out of subs only. Like kill the bass right out of Fathom 5. Listen to the lows on the bass. All of a sudden, the lows are coming through much more from the kick drum. And we can listen to that, but then if we go back to the same thing, and... First, I'll show you. Here's how dial this in. You can hear it's doing something. But if we turn on subs only, just like if you were to use um, slew only to dial in high frequency stuff, here's what you get. got that thump, and then if we turn the bass up, and we can also do other interesting things now that we're monitoring these super duper lows. For instance, what would happen if this, no snare, in fact, no kick. Now we have all thunder from the room, and a little bit of the lows. Now if we're doing this crazy thing, what would that come out like in the regular mix? It's all rumble now. There's no real definition to it. Let's find out. You can just barely hear it. Comes out kind of like that. And that's not very good, so let's quickly dial back in what we had before. We'll take those out, 
we're on subs only, so we can just fire it right up. We don't even have to solo Fathom 5. We're focusing on it so intensely already that it doesn't really matter. We could, mind you. This is what we got. And that's the kick drum. Let's throw a really hard um, snare drum, boost it very heavily into Fathom 5, and while we're at it, let's even make Fathom 5 brighter. Now if we turn it up that much, bass is coming through a lot more, so we'll dial that duck down. We have a sharper hit on Fathom 5 now that we've done that to it. Just a hint of that delayed room in there. Now that we've got that put back together, but with the sort of midier um, subs channel, here's what we get. And then we'll take it out. And now let's put back in that Fathom 5 even louder than it was. Now that's some lower mid sock that's very useful for this kind of thing. So here's the kind of thing that you can do with slew only and subs only. I think that makes it uh, fairly plain as to how this sort of thing works. These plugins don't have any controls. You can see it's just a blank slate. That means there's literally nothing that can go wrong with it. So that should work out pretty much for everybody who can even download it and install it. And using these, you can get a focus on different ranges. You can use it certainly for, like for instance, if I wanted to use um, subs only for my subs channel, what I'd get would be something kind of like this. Now I'm happy to push that pretty hard. and it doesn't have the same tone quality as Fathom 5. I can make that be all MIDI if I want to, or pull it back to what this is. This is a completely different algorithm. So this is more useful for sitting in a mix, but if I only had subs only, and you can have subs only because it's free, you'd be able to do something like this, and then feed that into the mix as well. And it's having kind of an effect. Or you could take um, the overheads and run them to another set of channels, throw a slew only on there, and then throw a bunch of compression and have high frequency compression on there. That could also work. If you do that, what you get is something kind of like this. I've got compression going on these guys. So what I can do is just solo them. And then if I drag that over here, you know, on the Mac, what I'm doing is command option dragging. If I want to duplicate things like this, it's nice to make it go faster and be more convenient to use. If I was to treat this as the high frequency channel and I wanted to compress it, and I got compression because this is what it would be like without it.
I could make it be just high frequency compression. And it'll sit on the, uh, the symbols and sustain them a little bit longer without getting in too much of the way of everything else. Again, this is more me just showing you all the different things that one can do with this uh, setup. And you can finish up with a mix with a lot of stuff going on in it. And be able to control all the frequency ranges independently and dial in the stuff that most relates to certain frequency ranges. Like adjust the extreme brightness of the guitar while monitoring through slew only. Adjust the way that low frequency stuff balances. Again, I'm demonstrating Fathom 5 as well. That will be coming out pretty soon. Um, and do stuff that interacts greatly with the extreme low frequencies and throw on subs only to get a spotlight on that kind of stuff and get a sense for where it sits. And again, all you got to do is throw on some wonderful meter like Vox Ingo Span. And I, the density mode I love. And then you can see how it sits. And set it up so that it kind of balances. Got it so that the low frequency kick is balanced with the full body sound. My highs are not as compressed as they could be. I could have the highs sitting exactly in the same place as the subs. And, you know, there is an argument for doing that. And here is a kind of thing. This might be actually a little bit obnoxious, so let me mute and solo that at the same time, just for a moment. Test oscillator starts out set to a loud beep. We got pink noise. And if I'm not mistaken, yep, I got blue only going on. Now the way this works, and I think I had something funny going on in the, oh, I'm feeding in, yeah, yeah. So, don't really need to be feeding into uh, Fathom 5. <laughs> Fathom 5 is doing interesting, strange things to that. But what we've got here is regular old pink noise. And part of how slew only and subs only are calibrated is with this type of concept. For instance, if I put on slew only, notice that the RMS loudness is the same. Put on subs only. It's actually a little bit louder. I wonder if I've got anything causing that to be happening. I know that I'm in the uh, kick channel, but I don't think I'm doing anything to really cause it to be different. Might just be the way the pink noise works. But the idea is these things balance out in a way that tends to favor, let's see, we're going down to roughly the same amount. It's just packing up a lot because we've got a lot of subs going on here. I think actually if I push it up a little bit more, will get into a zone where they're acting kind of the same. Or and yeah, maybe not. Okay, so subs only is meant to go louder if you're doing um, pink noise. But the slew only was coming out pretty clearly calibrated the idea is that there is a general balance that works pretty well as far as things sounding right. And 
if slew only and sub only are coming to roughly the same levels, then it's going to balance pretty well and it's going to sound about right on most systems. But perhaps the reason I have subs only um, coming across at a louder level is because you have to be cautious of stuff like that or it'll go into um, your playback systems and cause problems. Generally, we don't want to have that much low end bloom. So it's kind of heightening it somewhat. That, or I've designed it also to work with white noise. So what do we get? And white noise is kind of the opposite of the pink noise. And then white noise, slew only is going to be a loud letter. Anyways, this is the kind of stuff I work on all day. And it might not work perfectly with a test oscillator. I think it worked out pretty good. But given that the idea is to have it run with something like this. And give you useful tools for working with the music mix. I think it's okay if the test oscillator doesn't work exactly as I anticipated. Anyhow, this has been more than enough time telling you about slew only and subs only. I warned you, I said, you know, if you don't want to listen to a lot of talking about how and why this works, then go and play with these. And indeed, you should go and play with these. But they are designed to be useful mixing tools for both listening through and with certain kinds of metering to give you a quick idea as to whether stuff is sitting in the right area and how that works. And again, my, my example there, I could have a lot more high frequency stuff floating around in general. If I was more compressed on the symbols, if I was more compressed with a more sort of radio friendly sound with some of my other sounds, then slew only could come out pretty much exactly balanced with um, levels and peak versus RMS. Kind of the same thing with subs only. Subs only, you definitely want to have a lot of extreme low frequency whump, but you don't necessarily want the whole thing to be like the entire time. These are the tools that are designed to help do this kind of stuff properly. And like I always say, I really hope you like them.